What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko back with Alpha. And what did you do today? We came first place with, oh, I think I don't have the cards. Hold up. Hold up. They're, they're right here, they're right here, they're right here guys. It's, it's RDA. RDA um, Centurion. Yeah, RDA Centurion, so not just pure RDA. And uh, we, we've we been getting a lot of comments on his profile from last time he came first place with it. We wanted to wait for the new card to come out. He tested it out first place at Locals, which is absolutely insane. Now, if you guys wanna see the full deck profile, Check it out on Alpha's channel. I'll leave a link at the top of the description below. But in today's video, what I'm gonna be showing you guys is all the combos that you can do with this deck, especially with the new card, with the Centurion cards. And Alpha, I'm gonna let you take over because I've seen some of the end boards. The end boards look crazy. And uh, I guess you're gonna show them how to do it. Yeah, of course. FYI, I got a lot of comments saying uh, I need to smile more. So I'll try and smile for this one a little bit. But um, I'm really excited for the new cards. Centurion obviously added a little bit to RDA, but we also got this card. And this is the card I was talking about in the last profile on your channel. And this is one of my favorite cards in the archetype. And I'm going to show you a little bit why. Actually, we're going to show right now. All right, let's get into so, it. So a one card combo is just so resonated. We're obviously going to start with the most basic combo. And we're going to get into an intermediate combo. And an, I'm going to use the words advanced. And it's not really advanced, but it's, it's a lot cooler. So we're going to start with like Soul Resonator. And when we normal it, we get the special any level four Lord Fiend. And in this case, we're going to get the new guy. When we have a Fiend Tuner on the field, you can just special summon it out. Lo and behold, it's a 3-3, three and three, right? So you get to then make Red Rising Dragon and go Red Rising target the Soul Resonator to reborn it back. But the Lotus King, because it was sent as material for a Synchro Summon, it gets to dump any normal trap into the grave. That normal trap, again, there are many options available and we'll talk about that more in the profile. But the one we're going to be dumping is Red Rain. And Red Rain is an incredibly powerful card if you guys haven't read it. But it is basically a monster banishing board wipe that just comes back every single turn. And the way it comes back every turn is when you Synchro Summon, so in this instance, Red Rising plus Soul into Abyss, Red Rain just goes back into your hand. So off that one card, you now have a target negation plus a banishing board wipe. You still have four cards in hand and you're you're usually having the highest level monster on the field. Level nine is pretty hard to compete with unless into certain matchups and it turns this guy unaffected by other card effects. So this simple one card like mid-range style is incredibly powerful for just the architect in general. Later on in our third combo, we're actually gonna show off why this card increases the ceiling of your Centurion combo as well. And so for a more intermediate combo, this one doesn't use the Lotus King as much, but it's gonna actually capitalize on the new Centurion cards. So let's show that off actually. So we're gonna go Soul Resonator here and we're actually gonna search ourselves a Bone Archfiend. Bone Archfiend is just gonna special itself by dumping a card from your hand. And it's actually gonna use its effect to send a Crimson Resonator to turn itself into a level three. I actually highly recommend that because of the new Lotus card, we keep this guy as level three. Sometimes you turn him into level three, uh, level two, but I think keeping a level three is nice because if you have the Lotus King, you can still special it and still make it Red Rising and keep the level safe. But in this instance, we're gonna make it a level three, the bone, and turn these two into the Red Rising. Red Rising is gonna go and summon the Crimson Resonator, and Crimson Resonator is gonna use its effect to special out Synchron and Vision. This is actually very standard. I'm sure a lot of RDA players already know this line and they're very used to seeing these four exact cards on the field. We're gonna go next into Scar Red for our first Synchro. We're gonna use Scar Red plus Vision Resonator into our this pattern. And we're gonna trigger the Vision and the Scar Red to then make a Vanilla RDA plus searching us a Crimson Gaia. Then we're gonna use Vanilla RDA plus a Synchron Resonator into Abyss, and we're gonna use Synchron's effect to add back a Resonator, and in this instance, we're gonna add back Vision, and we're gonna have Vision in our hand. And now this is actually like very standard, like I'm pretty sure a lot of people know this combo, you're gonna go Crimson Gaia, add Red Zone, yada, yada, yada. And now the reason why this is actually so nice and convenient is this is the standard combo, yet we can go so much further than this, just because of the new card Centurion Auxilla. So obviously we can special the Vision Resonator from our hand and then make our Auxilla from here. And a quick thing to point out is some of you might be like, oh, it seems like a waste to burn this pattern here, right? You can actually, if you want, you can 
go ahead and burn your abyss instead. I don't think one is particularly more correct than the other. The reason why I like this pattern in here sometimes, your opponent might actually end up forgetting about it. Sometimes this happens, they forget about it, and you just banish it on future turns and you use your red zone to bring it back, and they're like, oh my gosh, wait, where does this pattern come from? Uh, but obviously, um, Bane is still also powerful for that exact same reason, because if you bring it back, it's also a lot of pressure. But for the sake of example, we're just gonna burn at this pattern. But we're gonna summon out our Auxilla from here. And Auxilla, what Auxilla is gonna do is get us an Eastern Trion card. If you already open the field spell, it's a, your resiliency gets a lot higher. But for this instance, we're just gonna get this Centurion field spell right away. And we're gonna use this Centurion field spell to pitch another card. And we're gonna actually uh, put Trudea into our back row. And we're gonna go Trudea, summon itself out, shimmy it back in, get our Primera. Special Primera. Pr from here, Primera can go and search a wake up. Um, you have your choice of getting another field spell. Uh, you can get failings, you can get whatever. In this instance, we're gonna get wake up just because this actually adds a lot of resiliency to Nibiru at this point. Um, you can actually just stay as is because on your opponent's turn, you're gonna special the Trudea to make it a level eight and you're gonna use the field spell. You're gonna turn these two into your Crimson Dragon, Crimson Dragon, target the Auxilla tag out, make a Calamity. I didn't say this during my profile, but I need to say it right now. Calamity is a Jack Atlas card. I'm allowed to make it. RDA players are allowed to make it. Crimson Dragon is also a 5Ds card. We're allowed to make it. We shouldn't feel... <laughs> we should feel Harassed. safe make it. Yeah, yeah, we, we should make it. We can make it. No one else can. We no can. one else can. We, we're canonically allowed to make it. But yeah, so obviously this is... This seems pretty straightforward. The one cool thing I want to talk about, uh, Wake Up actually, was back here when we were basically like this. If you see that you're gonna get Nibiru, so let's say we do actually, we get Nibiru, because we still have a monster in our like spell track zone, we can actually use the Wake Up to spawn a token. Well, here's the Nibiru token, here's the Wake Up token, right? What's actually important here is that you can use Wake Up's, wake up's effect to banish itself, to dump a Phalanx, and Phalanx can then dump itself to reborn the Auxilla, right? And that's nice because on end phase, Auxilla will grab one of your uh, Centurion cards and put it into your spell and trap zone. So it's the same result, right? You'll summon your Primera and your Trudea on your opponent's turn, and then you'll make the Crimson and then the Calamity. You can Calamity lock through Nibiru? Yeah, so the the, the thing um, about this line is it's particularly potent when you have Auxilla already on the field and one of the names in the back, in, in the back row while the other is somewhere in the banished or the graveyard, right? That's once, if you if you have reached this point, you're Nibiru proof, essentially. Meanwhile, uh, it's like kind of like when I said also, like when you grab the field spell off of Zilla, if you already have wake up or field spell and you grab the other, then it makes it also resilient because that, for example, you can just pitch the wake up off this instead. So you can like be safer at an earlier point. There's also like cool lines where when you get nibiru earlier on, on your RDA cards, if you save certain effects, like Bone Archfiend's level effect, you can turn the Nibiru token plus one of your resonators into the Auxilla for full combo. So it's actually very bad to Nibiru too early and too late. There are very specific choke points. And in between there, obviously you'll see in the list, but we're on cards like Fausau, we're on cards like this field spell where at any point if you get Nibiru in the middle, one extra extender means Calamity Lock anyways. So it's actually very tough for your opponent to find a good Nibiru per se, unless they have a very deep knowledge of the deck. And um, I I talked about this more in our profile, but board breakers are not that great into this. I mean, maybe your opponent needs multiple board breakers to really put a dent into stopping Calamity, but these cards are very exceptional at stopping board breakers. Not as much as hand traps, but obviously we play a lot of cards like Cross Out to stop those hand traps. And so obviously with those two combos, we were kind of able to see like, okay, here's what like RD does to get into Centurion cards. Here's what Lotus King does just for your one card engine. We're actually going to show off a more of a mix of the two now. So if you want to look down here, we have Crimson and Bone Arch Beam. A lot of RDA players know that together, this is probably one of your higher ceiling combos. Obviously you can get crazier three card combos, but I just want to show this cool two card combo off. And I'm also going to preface it. This isn't like the perfect combo or like the most busted combo. I'm sure a lot of people in the comments might have a different version. And if you do, make sure to comment that be down below so we can kind of see what everyone's thoughts are. But this is just a cool one I was doing during the tournament. And it was very powerful because it was Calamity plus like three other pieces of interaction. So it was very hard for my opponents to really stop me what I was doing. Let's just show it off so we can actually see what happens. So we're actually gonna summon our Crimson Resonator because we have an empty board. And we're gonna normal summon our Bone Resonator. Bone Archfiend, he's not a Resonator. Uh, we're gonna turn these two into our 
Red Rising. Red Rising is going to summon out our Crimson. Crimson is actually going to use its effect here to summon out Vision Resonator, which a lot of people know. And instead of Synchron Resonator, we're actually going to go get our Soul Resonator. Soul Resonator's effect is going to search us a Lotus King. And the cool thing here is I won't get too much into this video, but maybe we can tease it for another video in the future. If your opponent Nibiru's here, before you declare what your like before you resolve your search if you just go soul resonator effect and they go nibiru here you can play through nibiru you still calamity law so that's actually pretty cool and usually people will nibiru here naturally because they see you special two off of crimson they're like okay that's more than five summons you're out you're gone but if you don't search off this yet you have a way to play through nibiru which is really cool but for this video we're going to show off searching off our new card here we're going to use red rising plus the crimson resonator into our Scar Red, we're gonna then go Scar Red and Vision into our disc powder. I usually like to summon it up here and then trigger these two to summon out a regular RDA. Plus searching us the Crimson Gaia and we might as well just use it right away to search the red zone. Obviously you can search up extra extenders if you get interrupted more, but just for simplicity's sake, you just search this right away. We're actually then gonna go special the Lotus King and use this plus Soul for a second Red Rising. Use the Lotus Effect to send the Red Rain and use the Red Rising to bring back the Soul Resonator. We're gonna turn these two into Abyss and trigger the Red Rain to add it back to hand. We're then gonna go Bone Archfiend's Effect to send the Crimson Gaia to special itself out and then use Bone Archfiend to dump a Uva Loop into our grave. Now, the thing you change the level of, it doesn't really matter. What I would re maybe recommend is either turning this into a 10 or turning this into an 11, just so the Red Rain can make it sure that like your monster is the highest level one on the field. But the most important thing is you dump an Uva Loop. For Uva Loop, what you want to do is you want to banish one of the Red Risings and one of your, well, basically your Sky Red. You want to make sure that uh, at least the RDA is the one specifically banished. Because the first one, Banished, will add it to your hand, and the second one will special it out onto the field. Now you can use Uvalu plus the RDA into your Auxilla, and Auxilla would then get you into your Citreon Field Spell. You can activate the Field Spell and just pitch a card, and you can get yourself into either uh, Premier or Tradea. The reason why I'd actually recommend getting uh, Premier in this case is because you can just use this Powder's Effect to bring back this RDA, and on your opponent's turn, you can go Primera effect special itself, and then you can have the four and eight available to make the Crimson Dragon, of course, Crimson Dragon on your Auxilla to make the Calamities, right? The really cool thing is if you use these two into the Crimson Dragon, the Scar Red will actually trigger, allowing you to summon, summon another RDA out. And this is actually nice because when you have these two cards up, that means your red zone gets to still be live to pop a card, even when you use your RDA as a body for the for the Crimson Dragon. So that's really nice. And there's also applications like because like if you get Nibiru there, then you have Primera still and you can special it out, do other things and like see what you see what you want to do from there. Calamity, woo! Calamity, woo! Either way, you get to Calamity. So no matter what you're doing, you're getting into Calamity. So many different ways you're getting to Calamity. It, and it's all, and again, like, you go Red Rain, everything gets banished, except your highest level guys. It, it literally doesn't matter because you'll just go Red Zone, bring back, like... You bring them all back, essentially, slowly, slowly. Yeah, you bring back, like, this. I'd recommend bringing back this powder because this powder on the next turn will just bring back Abyss. If you Red Rain and have two 12s, do they stay both sailing board? Yeah, this has, I don't know if you want to do one of it, but that says monsters, like, plural. So, oh, so if you have two 12s, both 12s yeah. say. And 12 is the highest in the game. You build at most will put up a level 11. They're not playing the level 12 version. So you're having the highest level guy on the field. Keep in mind, like, even without these guys, like, you know, screw it. Like, let's say everything else got cleared out, even though it probably won't. This is 7k damage on its own. Yeah. And keep in mind, like, oh, you know what really, uh, you know what the actual cool part is? Like, if you're like, oh, where am I going to get the damage? This thing on end phase, you'll just... Oh, true, it summons that back. Oh, and the Red Lotus does burn damage, right? Yeah, they're already less than 8k, so... So, yeah, you're, you're always going to be able to OTK. Yeah, under the worst circumstances, it's very hard not to OTK, but, you know. Alright, so that is it for the combos, guys. I know there's a lot of, uh, this actually, that last combo is pretty complicated, but pretty cool. One card combos, two card combos, you have so many things to do. And if you guys want to check out the full list to understand how this deck is built and how it's played, make sure to check out Alpha's channel. A link will be at the top of the description. Thank you guys all for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Alpha, you got anything you want to say before we head out? Bank calamity. No!